What's going on everybody? It's Warren. Welcome back to the Cosmic Wonder and today was the finale of the Falcon and the Winter Soldier series on Disney Plus. And I want to know what you thought about it. So rate this episode out of 10 in the comments down below. And did you like this more than, less than, or just about the same as you liked WandaVision? Let me know down below. This is going to be my ending explained and post credit scene explained for the finale of the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. So needless to say, yet I'll say it anyways, spoiler are coming up. And if you haven't yet entered my Captain America Shield giveaway, you can find the details in the description of this video. So let's break down what just happened in the finale of the Falcon and the Winter Soldier, starting with that post credit scene. Now, as we learned in this series, Sharon Carter was never pardoned for what she did during Civil War. She got Sam his wings back and she got Captain America, Steve Rogers, his shield back. She was then marked enemy of the state and has been on the run ever since. Then in this episode, we found out that she she was in fact the power broker. And not to brag, but I did call that right after episode two. So Sharon Carter was the mysterious power broker, and we were kind of hoping that she would turn out to be good, but according to this post credit scene, that is not the case. In fact, her whole plan, helping Bucky and Sam, was actually to get pardoned so she could learn inside information about the government. So that's what she did. She helped Sam and Bucky, and then she had a hearing in which the government apologized for what they did to her, and they pardoned pardoned her and welcomed her back. They also essentially gave her her old job back at the CIA, calling her once again, Agent Carter. But as she leaves, while everybody is clapping for her, we kind of see this little evil look go on her face. This is later confirmed to be an evil look when she ends up making a phone call. She tells this person on the other line to start lining up her buyers because they're about to have full access to government secrets, prototype weapons, and more. She's now working for the CIA and she has access to some pretty juicy stuff. And this was her plan all along. Help Bucky and Sam so she could get pardoned and then have access to all of of these things because she had no intention on giving up being the power broker, which is a pretty big twist, but it seems like she's built quite the life for herself in Madripoor as the power broker, and even though her country has now pardoned her, which was her whole plan all along, she hasn't exactly pardoned her country for what they did to her because she feels like she was treated very, very unfairly and has lost hope in her own government. So she has taken things into her own hands and is now the very powerful power broker. The big question now is who is she talking to on the other line? It could simply be her assistant, which we saw in episode three, or maybe perhaps it's Valentina. We know she's up to something with Zemo and John Walker, perhaps Sharon Carter is mixed in there as well as the power broker. We may not know now, but it definitely seems like Sharon Carter is going to be returning in a future MCU project or projects as the power broker and this story is far from over. And now let's jump into the ending of the Falcon and the Winter Soldier finale. Of course, we pick up where we left off in episode five. The Flag Smashers have infiltrated the GRC, the Global Repatriation Council, and they are voting on whether or not to send refugees back to their own countries from which they fled from. The Flag Smashers want a world without borders, a world without flags, so of course they want to stop this vote. And how they plan to stop the vote is to take the members of the GRC hostage. They start to evacuate the GRC building, but the Flag Smashers have secretly infiltrated so the people who they think are helping them are actually the Flag Smashers kind of sending them to their doom. But the heroes show up. Sam and Bucky show up and also Sharon Carter who does help, but as we learn, she has her own agenda. She's helping so she can get pardoned and get access to government secrets and weapons. Sam shows up and we see his awesome new Captain America suit with his brand new vibranium wings from Wakanda. The wings were in the case that Sam was opening at the end of episode five and this was a favor that Bucky called in from the Wakandans. The suit is very comic accurate and he has now become Captain America. He is no longer Falcon and we even hear him call himself Captain America. Play that clip here. While a bunch of fighting is happening, the Flag Smashers take the members of the GRC hostage and they decide that it's actually time to kill them. They want to prove their point and hopefully spark some change in the world. 
But as they decide to do this, John Walker shows up with a new Captain America shield that was nothing like the vibranium shield that he used to have that Sam now has. But he shows up and he starts to actually kick some butt. He defeats a few Flag Smashers and almost defeats Carly, but in the end, he makes a decision and actually redeems himself. Instead of going after Carly at the end to try and kill her, he actually makes the decision to try and save some people. From here, he would actually go on to fight alongside Bucky and Sam, who of course is now the new Captain America. John Walker has thrown his makeshift shield away and has actually accepted Sam as the new Captain America. And then at the end, he goes on to become US agent just like he does in the comics. And as we can see here, he is rocking an extremely comic accurate US agent uniform. So we have not seen the end of John Walker. Unfortunately, the person that gave him this new suit and has deemed him US agent is Valentina, otherwise known in the comics as Madame Hydra. Unfortunately, we're unsure of Valentina at the moment. Is she bad? Is she Madame Hydra just like she is in the comics? Or could she perhaps be working for Thunderbolt Rock? More on that in just a bit. We go on, of course, to find out that Sharon Carter is actually the power broker. She hired Bartrock the Leaper, but she kills him because he tries to blackmail her. But she gets shot by Carly. Then Carly and Sam fight until Sharon eventually shoots and kills Carly, which means that the two people who knew she was the power broker are dead. Zemo stated in a previous episode that he knew of the power broker, but didn't know who he or she was. So I'm guessing that a lot of people don't know that she is the power broker, especially not Sam or Bucky or the US government for that matter. But this is actually why she kills Carly because she can't have Carly telling Sam that she's the power broker. After Carly dies, Sam takes her out to some paramedics where a bunch of newscasters are around filming. The senators from the GRC council are there and Sam makes a very heartfelt speech about not sending away the refugees and about helping the world and not being against each other. We learn that the speech actually worked on the council and they decided to not send the refugees back. And it looks like it also also worked on a lot of people as a lot of people have embraced Sam as the new Captain America. However, at this time, the Flag Smashers have been taken into custody. These are the super soldier Flag Smashers, not the civilians that chose to follow them and help them out. The police are taking them away and we're led to believe that they're actually about to escape as one of the SWAT members says the Flag Smashers motto, one world, one people. However, that is not the case as they all die in an explosion. We cut to somebody in a car who has just hit a detonator and this this is actually Zemo's butler. We were introduced to him in episode three. So in reality, it's actually Zemo who killed the remaining Flag Smashers, or at least his butler did under his instructions, and he killed them to finish his job, to take out all of the super soldiers. However, he did not finish this job completely. We heard an agent tell Sam that there was actually a Flag Smasher, a super soldier Flag Smasher, in the ocean. So there is at least one more left, and probably more, even if we don't count Bucky and John Walker, who are both super soldiers. Now after the explosion, we cut to Valentine who calls Zemo a friend. And it seems like she actually helped Zemo blow up the Flag Smashers, so she's up to no good. But the big question is, is she up to no good to do good or to do bad? Because you can get rid of the bad guys by not playing by the rules, but you could also get rid of some good guys along the way. We'll have to wait and see, but she will be showing up in the Black Widow movie. This is confirmed. So we're going to be learning a lot more about her pretty soon. We then go to Bucky making amends with Yori, at least doing his part to try and make amends with Yori. Yori had been wondering what happened to his son who died. He believed that it was more than what the police told him. And this has been haunting him because he didn't really have any closure about it. Bucky had been trying to make amends with him but never could until now. He tells him that his son was murdered by the Winter Soldier and that that was him. Yori asks why and Bucky tells him, I didn't have a choice and this is because he was brainwashed by Hydra at that point and under their control. We end Bucky's story with him crossing out all of the names on his book of amends, leaving it with Dr. Rayner at the end, thanking her for everything that she did for him. And then we have a very heartfelt ending with Isaiah Bradley, where Sam says that he's going to fight for his country and be a black Captain America. He then takes Isaiah and his grandson Elijah to the Captain America Memorial and we see that Sam had a memorial put in for Isaiah so everyone will know and never forget what Isaiah did for his country. 
And if we freeze frame here, we can actually see what the memorial says. And it says, Isaiah Bradley is an American hero whose name went unknown for too long. Isaiah was one of a dozen African American soldiers who were recruited against their will and without their consent for participation in human testing in pursuit of the super soldier serum, most did not survive. The few who lived through testing were sent on secret missions during the Korean War. During the conflict, against all odds, Isaiah Bradley rescued his fellow soldiers and 28 other POWs or prisoners of war from behind enemy lines. However, fearful of the ramifications of a black super soldier, some individuals within the government tried to erase Isaiah's story from history. His family was issued a falsified death certificate and for decades the truth of his unflinching bravery was buried. Sam says now they'll never forget what you did for this country and Isaiah embraces him with love and thanks that people will now know everything that he went through for the country. And then the series ends with a feel good scene back in New Orleans with Sam's family and his community with Bucky alongside as well. So what does this mean for the future of the MCU? Well, Sam is now Captain America, so we definitely have not seen the end of him. He will most likely go on to lead the new Avengers team. This team will consist of characters that we already know, like Spider-Man, Doctor Strange, Wanda, and some new characters coming in as well, possibly She-Hulk, Moon Knight, and many other new characters. Sam will most likely be the leader of this new team. Sharon Carter is also about to stir up some trouble. She is the power broker and extremely powerful powerful person in Madripoor, but is now working for the CIA and has access to a lot of their secrets. Secrets that she is planning on selling, so this story is definitely going to be addressed later on down the road. And this could possibly lead us to the Thunderbolts or the Dark Avengers forming. Or perhaps maybe both. After all, Zemo is in the raft, a place that Thunderbolt Ross actually has control over. Perhaps Thunderbolt Ross is going to get Zemo and the others that are in that maximum security prison and form his Thunderbolts team. Either way, we have not seen the end of a lot of these characters from the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. The president of Marvel Studios has already said that what happens in these shows does take place in the MCU and will lead into movies. So don't worry, if you love the Falcon and the Winter Soldier, these characters are not done yet. But in the meantime, let me know what you thought about the finale and what you thought about the series as a whole in the comments down below. Don't forget to subscribe for more Marvel content. Don't forget to like the video and for live updates, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter. As always, thank you all so much for watching. Woof woof.